Hi, you are watching BeautiesTalkingBusiness.com with your co-hosts Andrea Penningill and Jenny A. Hansen. Together, Andrea and I have over 20 years of experience in the beauty world combined. And you can find Drea over at Shine with Drea and ShineWithDrea.com and Jenny at Jenny A. Hansen and Jenny A. Hansen.com. And if you have not yet joined our Facebook group, please come over to Beauty's Talking Business and join. Meet the community. We would love to have you. So let's get started with part two in this interview of dealing with difficult clients and really standing out in the industry with Katie Lamson from sugar and spice. Hello. Hi, everyone. You are watching Beauties Talking Business at beautystalkingbusiness.com. My name is Jenny Hansen. I've been a nail technician for 12 years. I'm also in the product development space and have a blog over at jennyahansen.com where I teach creative entrepreneurs how to be creative and also have their business savvy. Today, we are addressing and we are talking about how to really stand out in your industry. We have a special guest with us named Katie and then a of course, Andrea. So um, I'm going to let Katie introduce herself really quickly, and then Andrea can go through and introduce herself, and then we'll get started in today's show. So Katie, do you want to tell us about a little bit about yourself real quick for anyone who missed part one? Because this is part two of our, of our part three series, so if you missed part one. I back on Beauty's. <laughs> I loved my first episode with you guys and I look forward to contributing in the future. Um, I'm the owner and creator of Sugar and Spice Nail Salon. I've been in the industry for over seven years. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do, especially when it comes to customer service, making sure it's a good experience for my clients that's unforgettable. I'm also very uh, passionate about the health of the industry and then education and passing things forward as well. So that's why I'm here and happy to be here. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here, Katie. Um, I, I just wanted to say I love that Katie has so much experience on traveling and seeing the other perspectives of other salons. And she actually has some really juicy behind the scenes of like, like things she's researched in like going out and finding out what the industry, what's happening in the industry in other countries and in other spaces and cities and stuff like that. So I'm excited to pick her brain today. <laughs> Just a little bit about myself. My name is Andrea Pettingill, and I'm the creator of Shine with Drea, D R E A, on online everywhere, you know, um, Periscope, Twitter, which I'm not on very much, but mostly I'm on Snapchat, Shine with Drea on Snapchat, and um, my website and blog. My daughter has my phone. I'm like, we can't Snapchat. Someone's you got to Snapchat it. Did you? Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so we'll convert, we'll convert Katie to Snapchat soon. She's not quite on it yet. <laughs> working on me. <laughs> but let's jump into our topics. I know we both have some fun things to bring up, um, to help, um, other people in the industry to, um, enhance the client experience. Right. So yeah. would you want me to jump into my first yeah, topic? Jump, jump in. So um, what to do when a client doesn't like their nails, and Katie and I were talking about this earlier, what to do to kind of prevent that awkward moment of like, it's actually, even happening. I don't like these. Can we restart over? You know, like, what do you say? Like, what do you like do before that? What do you do? Um, what do you do to make sure that doesn't happen? But what do you do when it does happen? Um, mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that first? And then I'll kind of like. Well, I think it's huge to absolutely like protect yourself from before it even becomes an issue. This is something we used to see in um, the fancy place I used to work is that some people unfortunately would come in and they would try to get things comped a lot because mm -hmm. they knew that they were in a um, high end uh, five star environment. And so they kind of like have this thing that they could like, if they complain, they could get a lot of things comped. But so there are definitely certain things that you can say and do beforehand so that they know that, okay, I'm not going to like pull one over on this, this technician. And then like you were saying as addressing it after, if it does. So I think it's a great topic about mm -hmm. you, Katie. 
Yeah, prevention, 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 and hopefully that brings out perfection. And and yeah. so, um, yeah, do as much as you can up front to avoid that situation. Make sure that you're communicating clearly, that you're understanding what they actually want, not just, I think uh, a lot of confusion can come in when you assume, both client assumes yeah. you understand and you assume that you understand your client. So getting clarity in that conversation somewhere. And then, um, Again, if it wasn't worst case scenario, you've done all that, they still don't like it. Right. You know, handling that on an individual basis mm -hmm. uh, on a personal level to yeah. you know, prevent that in the future. Like And I do a consultation every time. Every yeah. time they come in, it's a quick consultation, even if I've been doing their nails for five years. But yeah, what do you what, Drea? And one of the main things like what me and Katie were talking about earlier, like before the episode, we were talking about how like um even if it sounds redundant and like if even if you sound weird say it again so i'll tell my client okay so we're going to do blue on this nail striped on this nail we're going to do ombre fade over here and this glitter on this nail is that right and like just like really like again and again like re making sure that that's what they want um and um just that that clarity you know katie and i were talking about my experience i had a couple months ago with one of my clients where um, I normally would like get like really specific like that and just the way it flowed that day, you know, not on my game or whatever. What ended up happening is she's like, oh yeah, let's just do these three colors. Let's go. And I was like, oh, okay, let's just do it. Cause it sounded like she was so sure. And she like had it figure out what she wanted. But what happened was it was a fade, a glitter fade, like ombre yeah. three different colors on all 10 nails. And so instead of doing all three and seeing how it looked on the first nail, I did a little bit of the color a little and then I did all 10 and then they had the one color on and then I did the next layer and the next layer so it ended up being like by the time we were done we were like committed to all 10 nails and we didn't like it neither of us liked it we were like oh no this doesn't look great at all like let's take it off and so we, we thought about like changing one little thing like no we have to take it all off but um that like assuming is what we both did me and my client both together we were just like assuming that like we're just going to go for it instead of like really talking about it and like, you know, cause we got into conversation or whatever. She right. was totally like, cause she was part of the situation. Right. right. But so you're just, validating. It just you're like reminded validating me what clarify. yeah, clarifying. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and it, um, you know, so like, obviously we talked a lot about, you know, clarify, clarify, reiterate, t speak it back to them. They, they might say it and you might be like, okay, okay, I got it. But no, say back what you heard them say because communication gets so like twisted around. Right. What do you I do, Katie? That, I think that's where that consultation that you were mentioning, Jenny, even if it is an existing client, you know, they may want something different than they've typically done for whatever reason. So it never hurts to kind of see what, what they're going for for this particular visit. Um, one thing I do with my clients that I kind of have a vibe for and what they like is I'll have a, a color nail pinwheel with yeah. some fun new ideas. Maybe it's the latest trend. Maybe it's the, t the five new colors that just came out. And I know that they'll like these types of colors in general. And so sometimes because like with Andrea, with your experience, sometimes it's hard if they can't visualize and see the end product. So sometimes mm -hmm. having one of those, you know, the little round nail pellets, uh, palettes mm -hmm. <laughs> and just kind of showing yeah them. we all know what you're talking so about they can see, <laughs> so they can see ahead of time it's worth a thousand words right um, yeah. so if they That's can get the visual. idea visually and like physically put it against their nail and see if that's something that they like or not that can be helpful and so that's I do what that I do too with their skin tone you know yeah. like Ooh. maybe they're like well I want this this I want a pink but mm -hmm. I, I'll ask them, you know, do you, well, but I, we, I won't get into that because I, I know that Drea has a similar thing. But yeah, like holding a certain um, like blue base or orange base, certain colors against their skin tone so that they can actually see. They might think they want, oh, I want this color that I saw on, on Pinterest. Oh, yeah. But when you hold it up to their skin tone, that's not so complimentary. <laughs> it's not so complimentary. And so you're like, oh, well, let's go here. But what, what were you going to say, Drea, about, um, about that? And what do you do to prepare, to make sure it doesn't happen? And then what do you do if it does happen? So my biggest thing is to like re reiterate back to them, you know, to make sure it doesn't happen and get clear. And I love Katie's visualize, visualizing, like have a tangible, 
you know, way to show them because you might be like, oh, ombre, I know what that is. But they're thinking like, I don't know, like a, like a drag technique, you know, yeah, so it, knows what they're thinking. You need that, they you need that to articulate what they want to, or to we know all the names and what that means yeah. We're in the industry, but they're like, what does that mean? What is ombre? Like, they yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I want that fade with the colors transitioning. I don't know what yeah, that's called. Oh. So, okay. but yeah, what, what to do when it happens yeah. is uh, giving them options. Um, you can like, especially for me, time is a big deal. Like, like we talked about in our last episode, like where I'm like really back to back and my client, I teach them to respect my time by ending on time and by starting on time. Like I literally call them if they're two minutes late because <laughs> do it. And that way they're not late. Anyways. So, and so, so is the opposite. I'll, I'll, I'll schedule in like 10 minute buffers. Cause I'm just like, and I actually text them a day before. I do do the reminder. The appointment. And if I know they're prone to be late, I might text them, not in a naggy way, but like an hour. that day. You in like 40 minutes. You That's know what I mean? Just, yeah, I like that. Anyway, okay. Sit down for you. <laughs> the topic we should totally talk about. <laughs> but one of the things that I was yes. going to say was that um, giving them options, like, okay, so your appointment time is over in about two minutes. So I don't have time to redo this nail, but if we, if you come back in, I can sneak you in tomorrow and I can change it for you. Uh, you know, giving them options like that and being open to other possibilities or, um, I don't, well, like, I just, I just think of like giving them more options after the appointment's end, but with honoring your boundaries of what, you know, that, that, okay, you agree to this. One of the things is like, the more you reiterate it, the less likely they're going to be like, oh no, I'm not paying for this, redo it. Because they have affirmed you like five times saying, yes, this is what I want. So it kind of takes away that from happening. But when it does happen, um, and I mean, just get clear on and know what you are willing to do and know your, um, yeah, what you're willing to do. But and that's more, such a balanced approach too, because yeah. you are valuing yourself and your time and your other clients. And at the same time, you're still showing interest and investment in that client in, in your options that you're offering them to take care of them still and make sure that they're satisfied. It's a really right. nice balance. Good. Andrea, that's, that's so huge too, because honestly, if just pre know in your mind, think, okay, best case scenario, worst case scenario. And we do this in business all the time. This is actually a, a really popular business tactic is that because you know, with nails, it's fun because there's a lot of problem solving in it. You know, how are we going to structure? How are we going to build? How are we going to camouflage? How are we going to, you know, visually change this or that? And so you are already a great problem solver. So when it comes to a person, it's the same thing, but think in your mind, worst case scenario, how am I going to handle this situation so that you're prepared and then let it go. And mm -hmm. then expect, you know, then expect the best, assume the best know that it's going to be a great day. Everything's going to run really smooth. Do what Dre said with, you know, validating and doing all of that. And then if it does happen, you already know what you've decided for yourself, how to handle the situation. Yes, that's it's so a good. approach. Yeah. And if we go, if we go into like the emotional side of it, something that we kind of do as techs, as artists, as like, we might get defensive. It's like, if we love the work we just did on them and they're like, no, I don't like it. And it triggers an emotion. You want to like know how to manage that emotion and kind of separate yourself from your work a little That's bit. Good. That's like, good. React. Because when you just react to that, you might be like, too bad. I don't have another opening. And you might not really serve the, the client because you're like pissed off at that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If like you, when I called you the other day, they are not, <laughs> what? Like when I called you the other day, I had a situation with a client where it emotionally um, triggered. And yeah, it when you're emotionally well. triggered. And I, and I handled it very well and very professional. And then I got in the car and I called Dre and I was like, I'm emotionally triggered. I'm trying to hold this in a high space. I'm holding this in a high space. Like help me. Like I just like. <laughs> But that's kind of what you have to do. It's like, don't yeah. react. That's really good. So yeah. is there a good technique for someone? Because, because we might hear what 
you're not good enough. I don't like you versus it's just, they're not happy. They're not in love with. I want to jump in on this one. Yes. Okay. So, but but, yeah. What do you suggest? What we're talking about Jenny, because this is a way to stand out in the industry in a way you do not want to stand out. Personal and professional is very critical. Remember that this, you have to separate that. This isn't a reflection of you or your business necessarily. This is a client who's looking for more solutions from you as a problem solver Mm -hmm. and expressing to you that they may not love what they just got. And then looking again past that on a business and professional level at how can we resolve this? How can we make them happy? How can we learn from this experience and move Mm -hmm. on like you're saying and keep it at a positive experience? Right. You know, yeah. it's a failure. You're not a failure. Yeah. This is an opportunity to grow and become more professional mm-hmm. and expand what you do. Yeah. I think as artists, as artists, we we over identify with our work, just like we over identify. We've talked about this before with being a nail tech. And, you know, sometimes you gotta let that go so that you can balance your life. But on this topic, over identifying with this work, they say I don't like it. Instantly, you go ah, they don't like me. Like this is, this is a part of, this is a piece of me because I'm an artist and I've just vulnerably put myself out there. And I work so hard, so hard. And, and no, like we get to disconnect and be like, okay. And just like, remember, like, it just like serves to have the mantra, like in your head, like, um, what would be empowering Jenny? You're good at these, but like, just to have like a thought to just reflect on, like, I'm a professional professional I am an artist I am you know I am I am worthy of you know I'm a professional I am confident I stand in my power spiritual Um, affirmations and confident but also I almost think of I'm laughing because I'm thinking of like when you have like an outer body experience you know what I mean I'm almost taking this on an analogy level of okay I'm gonna step away from my body this nail and just observe it from a different standpoint which is my Mm -hmm. client's viewpoint Mm -hmm. and then once I've resolved that and I've problem solved yeah. from different perspectives, come back. That's true. Yeah. And I do that. I will literally step back and I'll be like, hmm. And I'll take like a deep breath and I'll let that emotion ride. So I'm kind of creating a speed bump for my emotions so my logic can catch up. And then just since I already know how I'll handle the situation, continue to handle it in a professional way, but I will not go into oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I won't go there. Because yeah. I won't go into the, my people pleasing. Like I'm yeah. a recovering people. Or the other extreme. Like Dre is a recovering perfectionist. I'm a recovering people pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> so, so still be, a, you know, I'll still be yeah. confident, but In your resolve the problem. And yeah. I think you're going to get energy regardless of how yeah. the reaction is. I think it comes to rechanneling that energy into learning, growing, solving, and yeah. moving forward. Moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yes. What Don't do let it go down the emotional, the people pleasing, or those other yeah, avenues. Yeah. Harness it correctly. That's, that's my stuff, not theirs. But do you, so you just, Dre, you just offer for them to maybe come back at a later time. You stay in your power and say, or, oh, I, like, maybe I'll say sorry once, but like, you know, like, oh, you know, I apologize, but that's not what we were thinking and that, that it you know, wasn't this misunderstanding. Would you just come back tomorrow and we can resolve it? Like, what, what do you do? To be honest, it doesn't happen in the salon a lot. And I think it's because of the way I communicate with my clients and I'm trying to find specific scenarios of when this happens because I feel like I'm able to like talk the client down from like, okay. Maybe I don't like this, but I'll be like, yeah, I know. Well, I'll, I don't know what I say, but it's something something like where you really touch on the trends and like how this is yes. so insane right Point now. Cut your Point ass. Out positive. <laughs> and, don't know it's you yet. <laughs> and, and, then, and then to make sure, be like, I know, wouldn't pink be so cute on you too? Like, I love how these turned out. What if next time we get to play with this? I'm so excited yeah. for next time. I'm so excited to try this one. Oh my gosh. Like, let me know if this one bugs you in like two weeks too much, but next time we can do this. this, And and they're, they're going to get so busy in life. They're not going to call you back and change. That's so true. I I learned this from, um, I saw, uh, Kimbo do this all the time in the salon, but like you can kind of feel their energy if they're starting to go, 
Yeah. You know, and that's when you can start to adjust maybe what you're doing or start asking them a little bit more, you know, but, but yeah, going in with the, um, Oh, this is so fun. This looks so good. Oh, this is right on trend. Or you know what? Maybe we should add next. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of like filling them out and then saving it. <laughs> yeah. Like, so you can recover and save from it before it like crashes and burns. That, that's a really good point. I think that's why I haven't, don't really have a lot of big experiences of like them to it totally failing. We can't, we have to take every single nail off. Like, I think because by the time we get done, we've resolved the problem. I know. Because I don't think I've ever had that happen either. With their energy the whole time. And I, th I think that's the key. And I think it comes with practice. Like some of you newer nail techs out there might be like, I've had this happen so many times. Like everybody, every time, like I have to redo the whole thing. But I think with practice, you'd be, you begin to be able to drive and talk on the phone at the same time. I always use this example because like, we get so into wrapped up into technique when we're first learning nails that we can't talk at the same time. We can't like do this whole, like, you know, walking your, holding your client's hand through the decision, <laughs> you yeah. know, and multitask. And it's, it's a skill that you develop and, and give yourself that patience and that, you know, allow yourself to learn. I love the saying that says, um, um, forgive yourself, for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. Oh, like, that's good. Like, forgive yourself. Like, it's okay. So anyways, give yourself that permission um, to just like the next time mm -hmm. you'll be able to do the dialogue better right. and guide the client better. And I really feel, oh, what, Katie, go ahead. Something valuable I heard with listening, because I'm kind of soaking this in as we, we go as well, so I may not comment quite as much, but, um, you know, besides the consultation at the start, is watching for communication and it's not always verbal. It might be body language. It might be facial expression. It might be them looking differently at their nails than when you started, uh, you know, and keeping, I think it's good to kind of do that throughout until you have developed that own sense of it yeah. um, to do that throughout. So it's not just like a one time, Oh, I already did the consultation at the beginning. It's a, it's a process until you yeah. yeah. Up. So keep that in mind and be patient with yourself and with them. And, mm -hmm. and also I wouldn't like, I like the idea of pointing out the positive and you know, it's like when you're a kid and you try food, you don't know if you're going to like a grape till you eat it. Yeah. You may not know if you're going to love that light blue until you've mm -hmm. tried it for two weeks. Like at the same end, I wouldn't just push something, you know, yeah. unless I really honestly felt that way. And I know none of you would either. Um, but keeping it real and genuine as well. Yeah. And I actually have a really strong feeling to maybe just for the newer nail technicians out there or, or service industry professionals that you could maybe just even give a little script of like maybe something I would say. So, um, there are some people that you will never please. There's just some people that we have a whole episode on this. Like, <laughs> I love that we're all smiling big because that means we've all had these lovely. It is experiences. okay. Yes, it is okay if a client doesn't like you or the way you do nails or vibe with you. You cannot please everybody. You can't, and sometimes it's not. It's that's just their. That's just their stuff, and it's like they might yeah. do the same thing with their hair or their eyelashes or anything or anywhere their food. That that is just maybe something within them that they just are very difficult to please or you cannot please them or not make them happy and that you can't own if you if you kind of catch on to if you start throwing out solutions and none of them are good enough then you can kind of know okay like this is maybe just that personality type that, that I'm not going to be able to please them and let it go. You might choose when you have those situations, especially when you're more established and you are more into man, you may choose, you know, these are certain clients I might let go because mm -hmm. we don't match well. It's not a good vibe here for either of us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Better fit for them. Right. And they will, they will find someone else. And, and I also wanted to just say that for me, like as, as if I do have one of those that are not the, the ones that I can please, I will say, or maybe they will, especially if you're new and you're in a salon, they're not going to complain to you. They're going to complain to the manager or the front desk or somebody else. So, so what I've had this happen to me one time and, and I was at a salon and the owner said, how do you think we should handle this? Cause I was the lead technician at the time and they were not pleased with some people on my team and the, the, the work that they had done. So, um, 
I, and I knew even in the appointment, I knew that this woman was already in this type, that that was her personality type because from the very beginning, nothing was okay. Mm -hmm. So, and they were like an hour late and they wanted to change their service. And it was a whole, it was like a day from hell. And so I had to like rally my team and I'm like, okay, we're doing this, 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 right. And I turned to the owner and I said, we're going to hear from her watch. And she's like, don't manifest it. And I said, nope, we're going to hear from her. Just wait. It was manifested when she walked in the door. <laughs> we heard from her. So she goes, how do you want to handle it? And it was a perfect growing experience. And I wrote a beautiful email and this is all I said. I said, you know, thank you so much for your feedback. We appreciate this feedback. It helps us to learn. It helps us to grow. It helps us to develop. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to ensure that you have a really incredible experience. Kill them with kindness, blah, 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 blah. And then it's, we'd be happy to redo um, or offer you one, because there was a group, there was like four of them. We'd be happy to, uh, she was the one who wasn't happy. Everyone else was fine. But yeah. it was like, we'd be happy to have, you know, our lead technician or someone else redo your set of nails. Um, so give us a call. We would do it. We would love to do it complimentary or we would love to do it 50% off. But if it's like a real big problem, we'd love to do that complimentary. Just let us know within the next 14 days. And then you set a time limit on it. Yeah, That's how time. Like the time limit. That's really smart. Then if they really want it fixed, they'll come back. They'll come back. They'll make the effort versus yeah. yeah. That's so Drea, did you have one other last topic on this? Um, on standing out in the industry? I think, I think I'm, it's okay. Why don't you? Yeah. Okay. So that was good. So we covered, so Drea, run us through really quick what, what we covered in this episode. I feel like we've talked about so many things. I know. <laughs> well, your bullet points. Your bullet points. <laughs> um, well, basically, we're talking about like what when your clients don't like what to do when your clients don't like um, what they've gotten. And I'm um, mainly talking about um, giving them options, reiterating in the beginning, re or repeating back to them what what it is that they um, that they communicated to you. I'm um, using visual visual tools to help the communication better better um but then also to go above and beyond when you are you know making it up to them and 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 making sure that they are always leaving feeling like that's just like big to me is making sure they're always leaving feeling like they get more than they paid for and that you're wanting the best outcome for them that you care you know mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care about all the other details they care when they can tell that you care you know yeah that's so good. And I, I love that yeah, quote. I, I love the quote. I don't know if you've heard this, either of you, but it doesn't matter what you know. It, it matters that people know that you care. That's good. Yeah. Too. People don't care what I, you know. Yeah. And mine's the under promise over deliver. Yeah. <laughs> All, the go. Go. All those mantras. So good. Oh my goodness, ladies, that was so fun. So let's close up this episode and while we end up, and just so you know, all of our information is going to be in our description boxes, links, everything. We'll also put it in the blog. Um, if you have any comments, please come comment and participate in conversation there at Beauty's Talking business.com. If you're not on our email list, make sure you hop on the email list because then you have full free access to all of our past episode and all, past episodes and replays. We usually leave one episode up for about a week and then we throw them into our, our replay vault. So to get that secret link to access that, you, you want to get on the list. And again, you can find me at Jenny A. Hansen, like the at symbol, Jenny A. Hansen, also at JennyAHanson.com. Um, if you're more creative entrepreneur, but we are at Beauty's Talking Business. And Katie, where can we find you? You can find me at sugarandspiceservices.com for my website. Sugar and Spice, your keyword for all your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all those things. And then I also have a blog called knowyournails.com. And that incorporates um, anything from trends to health and safety to things that you'd want to know about the industry if you weren't in it yourself. Mm -hmm. Andrea. Awesome. And me, my and name is Andrea Pettingill. <laughs> you can find me at Shine with Drea everywhere online. 
uh, Snapchat, Instagram, and uh, Facebook, and all that good stuff, and my website, shinewithdrea.com. So thank you guys for being on with us today. Thank you, Katie, for joining us and bringing your valuable insight to the conversation. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you so much. And stay tuned for part three. That's coming up next. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? Again, our host, our special guest host was Katie Lamson today from Sugar and Spice. And you can find her all over online with Sugar and Spice. And stay tuned with beautystalkingbusiness.com for part three of this episode where we are discussing how to handle difficult clients and really stand out in your industry. So we'll see you over on the next video.